Good morning. How's it going? Monday morning going good as usual. Uh, how was the drive in? Drive in was good. <laughs> good, good, good. Good. All right. So yeah, Tracy and I often do this like we just go for it really quick. We, we've got the topic the night before, but then we get into it. You got it. So we're talking about the top marketing trends and innovations for 2020. Yeah, let's do this. So what's happening in marketing? This is your state of the union address. Yeah. For your, your friendly neighborhood marketing company. And we're excited to talk through some general big shifts and trends in marketing for this next year. Yeah. So one of the biggest things that we've noticed and some of our clients have noticed, some of our friends have noticed is LinkedIn video and LinkedIn in general is, is huge. Uh, right now there's kind of a moment going on where a lot, I don't know if it's because a lot more people are on LinkedIn. Um, there's a lot of attention on LinkedIn right now and videos, especially regular consistent videos are getting a ton of organic reach. Um, we're putting out a couple videos a week and we're getting thousands of views on our videos. So right now, if you're able to put together videos on LinkedIn. Hi, Mickey. Hey, Mickey. Uh, Mickey just did a video on LinkedIn recently. How did that go? I would love to hear from you. How did your engagement go on that video that you just did? Um, so we've seen, like you said, like a thousand, we are getting a thousand views of video, which is pretty crazy. If you think about it, organic, organic reach or yeah. totally, you know, no paid advertising or whatsoever. We're getting a thousand views on every video. Now, how does that work? How is that happening? Well, you have to have an interesting topic. You got it. Right. You have to have something, you have to know the audience. And, um, it is interesting that, even in my opinion, more boring topics are getting a thousand views. Like I'm not saying that, you know, we're trying to be boring or anything like that, but even that is getting a lot of, a lot of traction. We do kind of ask our team to comment and like those videos. Yeah. It allows it to go further, allows it to kind of hack the algorithm, so to speak. And um, it just reminds me of Facebook like 10 years ago where there was just a lot more organic reach for, for pages, for companies. And so if you, if you see the opportunity, you any kind of opportunity, you really want to push hard into that opportunity because those things don't last that long in marketing sometimes. Yeah. So get on there, record some stuff and ship it. Exactly. Awesome. Tim, what's the second thing that's going on right now in marketing? So this has been around for a second, but I think it's seeing a massive uh, push right now. It's uh, something called story brand. And we've been a proponent for this for the last couple of years, but Story Brand is a book by Donald Miller, who is an extremely smart marketer who talks a lot about making your, your ideal customer the hero of the story and then positioning yourself as the guide. And so we strongly suggest checking out the book Story Brand by Donald Miller and looking at how to better position your company as the guide and your ideal customer as the hero of the story. There's a lot, there's a lot of other components there, but I think that 2020 will see people making sure that the core ideas of their marketing are resonating, not just the tactics, right? Absolutely. There's strategy, which is that broader, like how are we positioning ourselves? And then the tactics, like get on LinkedIn and do a video now. Yeah. Like, yeah. And if you're like me, you don't have time to like sit down, like, read a book. Um, they got, it's on audiobook. They yeah. also have a podcast. The first seven podcasts go through each one of their seven kind of components. Um, so just listen to it. No excuses. It's out there. Exactly. And then what's third? Third one. And this, is, this also has been around for a little bit, but it's just, it's almost becoming like a, you, sh you have to do it. And what it is, it's recording your website visitors with a tool like Inspectlet. Um, to help your website easier to navigate. So using these tools that are recording user sessions and then taking those that data, that information, and making changes on your website to make it easier for your website visitors to find the information they're looking for, to get where they're trying to go quicker, and ultimately, um, not to sound too tactical, but really to convert more website visitors into leads or, or prospects. Exactly. And I think the takeaway is like, if you're not making upgrades 
progressive upgrades to your website on a pretty regular basis, not waiting two years to do a redesign. Exactly. Um, you're kind of falling behind because you know other competitors might be making different changes to their website every week, every couple weeks, right? So really being that progressively, uh, progressively enhancing your website on a regular basis. You got it. Tim, what's number four? Number four, take a crazy amount of space with an entire FAQ on search engine results pages. Now this gets back into tactics real quick, but there is a, a piece of code that you can add to your website. If you Google Minneapolis SEO, for instance, we're number one for Minneapolis SEO, you can see there's an entire FAQ on the search result page. And we've seen that this increases the click-through rate. We've also seen, like I actually can pitch on that FAQ um, takes up a ton of space. Definitely a tactic, but it's it's really awesome to do this for your top money making keywords. And uh, yeah, focusing on money making keywords if you're not. But um, really, I think that the the broader shift here is that we are noticing the ability for people who know how to code or who can wield programmers to have massive advantages in search results. Absolutely. And you know, tons and tons of traffic on Google, right? Probably tons and tons of people searching this week for things that you do. And so actually being able to code or having developers that can take advantage of these opportunities for you is, uh, is pretty cool. And yeah, we're seeing it as a, a giant trend over the next year. Yeah. And the next one kind of jumps into also, you know, how can we do something different on that search engine results page where Google's displaying it and it's, it's position zero in search. And so that's the, the little knowledge box um, that you can put something to stand out. Tim, so, you, yeah, so we, a quick example of that is like when you say uh, chicken noodle soup recipe, right? You, you get it. a recipe right up at the top. You don't even have to click on the yeah. site. You don't have to click on the site. And I think some people get scared of that if their business relies totally on advertising revenue. But for small businesses, for service-based businesses, for product-based businesses that are, you know, you have an opportunity. Like if you're not selling advertising, you have an opportunity to be that number one spot. And in certain ways, it's easier than getting the normal number one spot, right? So there's, we call it position zero. And ways to do that, use headings. So this is like a real tactical thing, but use headings and then answer the question very succinctly and in, a, in an authoritative manner. So a heading with the question and the answer in a quick paragraph in an authoritative manner. So, you know, Mickey was on the live here for a second. Like if she said how to do meditation at work and then on, she had a blog about that and then she had the headline, um, a sub headline with that, that exact question, and then a brief three or four sentence paragraph that answered that question very quickly, it would allow people to uh, get the answer. And it also it is much more likely to be pulled into that spot in Google. And I, I think that this is one spot where Google is getting smarter, a lot smarter very quickly. So the best thing to do though, is look in your industry and see where these things are showing up. What kinds of yeah. questions are pulling that up? Google all kinds of things related to your company. See what the search results look like. And then essentially try to replace the existing one. To replace the existing one is much more likely than to start, start a, new a new one. So look for places where Google is doing that and then write content to replace those. It's super powerful. We get tons of traffic from these. Tons. If we get in the number one search results, for instance, we're in there for like, what's the best blog length for 2020 or something like that. Yeah. Those things get a lot of click through. So people are scared of them. Don't be scared of them. Take up more space. The game here is attention. It's attention, not just traffic, not just Google traffic. You need attention. Your business needs more attention. So those are our five top marketing trends and innovations for 2020. Now I just want to go into some kind of complementary shifts. Like what's happening? What, what are some other shifts happening besides these trends? Yeah. So one of the big things that's happening is attribution. You know, where are leads coming from? will continue to, to improve, but C-level executives are more interested in results than perfect attribution. 
attention. So if you've only got an hour to spend on this, focus on what's getting results and not necessarily how exactly you're getting there. Obviously, you want to get as much information as possible, but at the end of the day, people care about results. That's what's important. Another kind of just general shift is happening is that smart marketers are, what's up, sweet bro? Um, are realizing that CRM and automation won't do the marketing for them. So Salesforce isn't going to do your marketing for you. Yeah. HubSpot's not going to do your marketing for you. And if you're focusing too much on these tools, you'll get distracted. The core of any campaign is good content, right? Even, uh, you know, in Minneapolis, we've got, uh, we've got the guy with the bill billboards that does guaranteed offer. What's that guy's name? Uh, Chris Lindahl. Chris Lindahl, right? And he, like one thing that people talk about with his campaigns, first of all, he's just one of those guys that gets like, you know, 200% like saturation of the market so that he can, you know, basically get free promotion. I saw people dressing up as Chris Lindahl for Halloween. I mean, that's free marketing. So this guy is going so hard that he's getting free marketing from people, even if they're talking shit. They're, he's getting free marketing, right? So that's awesome. Um, an, another piece of that, though, is that, God, where was I going with that? Well, it's not the tools that's going to that's gonna. Oh, make you got to have content, right? You yeah. got to have content. It's, you know, his thing, you know, even if he has a hundred billboards, it needs to be a memorable campaign. It needs to stick out. It needs to push. And in the same way, uh, the, the one thing that I'd say with him is there, there's something called um, basically a content exhaustion. So after a little while, he's going to have to switch up his campaign because you need to have different content to catch people's attention in a new way. And he does that pretty regularly. He actually does switch those things up. But Basically, you don't want to get content exhaustion. You want to keep that content fresh. And I think it's important to, to talk about that you need to recognize where the white space is. Um, it's more important than ever because people's attention is going so many different places. It's not just on TV. It's not just in the newspaper. It's being uh, fractured amongst, amongst all these new apps, all the different websites. And so it's super important to figure out where the white space is, where your competitors are not yet, um, and don't just follow where every competitor is going. Yeah, I kind of love it when people follow us, like when competitors, like we got on, <laughs> we got on LinkedIn and did a bunch of video. I see the kind of like the people kind of trickling in and doing stuff like us, and uh, I love that. But it is kind of funny because we might have learned something that hey, uh, LinkedIn video for this reason is not great or, or what have, have, something about that and they're just following us blindly or whatever. You know, like I think it's interesting um, also that if other people are doing it exactly like that and you copy them, you're basically, you're watering down the pool. Maybe you need to take a whole new random angle. Maybe you need to go to events and be like really aggressive with events. Maybe you, your whole team needs to go to events or um, maybe you need to, if they're on Instagram, maybe you need to be on Facebook. You know, it's basically like taking a different direction than your competitors to look for where is that attention really? Because yeah. that's the real question. Where is the attention of our ideal customer? So don't go like lemmings off of a cliff and follow your competitors. You got it. So 2020. 2020. It's all about attention. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a good year. It is gonna be a fun year. It's gonna be a massive year for you and your company because you're gonna take big, powerful actions on the things that you know work and the things that you have a really good guess. Trust your gut. Take 2020 with massive action. And thank you guys so much for for listening to our our next our la our question. Best places to find events to attend. <laughs> Where to find attention in real life for your digital brand. So we got a question. Thank you, Bradley. Best places uh, to find a, events to attend. I got some ideas. Uh, go for it. Sure. Internet. Um, <laughs> Tracy no. attends a lot of yeah. events. So, so how, do you, how, do yeah. you do, how do you find the ones where your ideal yeah. customers well, really again, are? First and foremost, I know who our ideal customers are, and they're part of association. So the first thing I do, I check out what's going on with Housing First, what's going on with NARI, what's going on with the National Kitchen and Bath Association, what's going on with BBB, what's so, going on with the Chamber? So I'd say whatever your industry is, find the 
actually not even your industry, the uh, ideal customer's industry. You got So it. that's actually really important because I think uh, LinkedIn, what do, you, what do you say about LinkedIn? Um, where to find a, uh, attention in real life for your digital brand? Uh, oh, so where to find attention. So best places to events to attend, find where your ideal customers are, what organizations are they a part of, and go to those trade associations. Yep. Um, the best places to find attention in real life for your digital brand, um, definitely the same thing. I think people focus way too much on their their industry and not enough on their ideal customers industry, and a lot of yeah. times those are different. So that's the biggest hack there. Uh, as far as LinkedIn goes, um, our best strategy, I think, is uh, my question. My thing is asking questions to get engagement, right? I would say the other pieces are do video because videos on average get five times as many comments. Yeah. And comments, like you want it to be a conversation. You really want to be a, make it a conversation because if it's not a conversation, um, people get tired. People get tired of the soapbox. People and get tired, pitch. yeah, the pitch. So stop pitching. I follow so many brands yeah. that like, they do two posts a week and it's all like basically, pitch. buy my glasses, my glasses are, my, my glasses are the best. It's like, yeah. nobody cares There's about No one glasses. cares about your glasses. How, do you, <laughs> how can you be useful to people with bad vision? If you got it. You know what I mean? So think about it that way. Always be looking at ways to be useful to your ideal customer. LinkedIn is incredible right now. Let's just go through those one more time since we're, we'll recap. LinkedIn video on LinkedIn. Yep, story brand, putting your ideal customer as the hero, you're the guide. Recording website visitors with a tool like Inspectlet to help your website uh, be easier to navigate. Take up a crazy amount of space um, on the search engine results page with frequently asked questions. And using position zero in search or the knowledge graph stuff. Um, and then, like, you, like we were talking about, reverse engineer white space. Find out where these people are and snatch the attention by being useful to them Got it. and be open to doing things different than your competitors. Don't just follow them like lemmings. Thank you for joining us for Monday Morning Marketing and Coffee. All right. And do a little bit more of what you love this week, just a little bit. Do 1% more of what you love this week. I believe it's going to serve you well, keep you passionate. All right, see you guys. See you, everybody.